Attitude's own furtherment in this tournament. It would be well deserved, you know. Let's not let's not discredit this team here. They're 2-0 up for a reason. If it's a 3-0, it's also for a reason. I want to sort of say this as well. We we mentioned for Blank Esports who just lost their quarterfinal to Monster Shield Korea. That was their worst loss in their Pacific career history. This now, if Hong Kong Attitude lose, will also be their worst loss because they've always consistently made at least somewhere in that top four. They haven't lost in the quarters yet. And Hong Kong Attitude now facing match point against Talon Esports. This has to be a victory or they are out 0-3. I mean, I said it just before after Blank went out. This is looking like it could be the season where the veterans of the Pacific team scene rather all get dethroned. And Temple of Anubis here is where it could happen, but to Hong Kong Attitude as they set themselves up on this ground, running a defensive kind of goats composition, as strange as that is to say. And they do get an opening pick, amazingly. I'm going to say Talon are the ones running something strange here. They're doing actually a triple DPS. All three DPS plays are in. Yep, and they're all dead. That's the unfortunate part. Well, not all of them. Technically, TYG is alive, but uh, Persia's dead. That's the more important thing. Gagor is out of here. You don't have any other flex tank. You have one main tank in Villingo. Three DPS, as we've seen. We've seen the sort of wrecking ball being played as more of a hit and run style main tank as well. So it's kind of like an all in dive. You've got a all or nothing here. Everyone dives in. If you fail, you fail. I mean, we do see TYG pull out a Roadhog, but it's going to be hard to make that work. Now Talon just trying to make their make their way into this point. Finally committing in with the Wrecking Ball. TYG's not really in this fight just yet. Translocator out so that he can get oh. involved. Villano's already That's dead only tank. by the time TYG gets there. Exactly, it's the only tank. And this is the volatility of Triple DPS. It's in a very different incarnation, but it blows up. It's either in your face or the enemy's face, but it always blows up. This is where we got a question where that coordination was. TYG was off trying to get some health packs. And then Talon Esports engage anyway. He's late to the party. Villain Yo goes down. Now you start to see just individual members of Talon Esports being consistently picked out. They don't really have anything else they can change into. We already talked about that a little bit. A bit of advantage, the pick actually. on 1010 though is exactly advantage. And they get onto the point because of it. Already getting the pressure out. Oh. Hulk Hogg attitude though, they're just not having any trouble responding. Talon are finally coming up on some ultimates though, and Hong Kong Attitude taking a bit of time to charge theirs. Such a weird time for Talon Esports to lose. They had player advantage, they had the point control as well in terms of actually contesting it. And then TYG goes down with that EMP. Now they're fully reset, now they have to come back in and allow Hong Kong Attitude to have a defensive position. This does feel like a very winnable fight here for Talon, just through sheer critical mass of ultimates. Because Hong Kong Attitude are just a little ways away from their own, and there's the EMP to queue out the fight, plus the Dragon Blade. They've already got CQB, no sound barrier available. That would have been a potential fight changer for Hong Kong Attitude, but instead, for the first time so far, the Triple DPS is going to blow up in favor of Talon. Somewhere around EMP into Dragon Blade, very difficult to stop. Oh. That's a very interesting Graviton Surge. I'm expecting Mui to actually change onto another hero here, but nonetheless, that's a big ultimate. You'd, you'd almost want to see Mui just hold on to the Graviton Surge, even if he was considering changing, just because of how impactful it can be. And he's not changing. That's, that's even worse then. I mean, feels like it may have been just a bit of a blunder and uh, an expensive this one. This is match that. point, you can't afford this. Exactly. Talon as well on this point B. This is where you can get some really creative angles with the Sombra and also with that Wrecking Ball. Or you could just roll it right down the middle if you're villain, yo. That's what he's going to do. They're just looking for an angle in now. You see a Ting playing Whack-A-Mole there as well. Just doesn't quite catch villain, yo. Still just holding on to that minefield. There it Lays is. it down. Committed into the point itself. And this is where those creative flanks can come in and be a part of it. A Ting does catch Haru in the self-destruct, charges forward on oh. Villain Yo, who was also caught on his Whack very, very back. Exactly. More like a slam dunk -a mole Yeah, he just gets it that one time, which is the hammer is directly on his face. That's kind of what you need, though, if you're Hong Kong Attitude right now for Talon Esports. They try to get something in there, but just a sound barrier and a minefield, not going to be quite enough. We talked about how effective Ryan Hunt of the Shield is at clearing that mine. He's a mine sweeper. This is exactly what Hong Kong Attitude need right now. They've got to be really considering Villain Yo's ability to continue playing Wrecking Ball. It may not work out. He may be forced to change. That was a really crucial stabilizing fight for Hong Kong Attitude as well. When we were just talking about how lacking the grab could hurt them, they've now rotated into some very high impact ultimates. They can't use them with the EMP though. 
as the blade starts to carve up the back line as a few of them were safe from the EMP but they're not safe from the onslaught of damage from Talon. Bazzi is getting forced back though and with the closer respawns Talon haven't got the critical mass of kills. It does seem Hong Kong Attitude will again stabilize. This is the thing the EMP came down and so did the Dragon Blade but we didn't see any kills come out from Bazzi onto the Dragon Blade. Oh, out of two ultimates, they got about one kill. CQB has a sound barrier anyway, gets to come back and use it. There's no way Talon Esports, after using both of those, can fight through a sound barrier as well. And they lose, like, expectedly. And also pushing Talon way, way back. They're not just going to let them get out for free. They're going to force them back and charge up ultimates while they're doing it. Now Hong Kong Attitude poising themselves for the next defense. Got the tools to use this with. Villain Yot nearly onto the minefield, but we've seen how much work a Ting as the Reinhardt can get through that. Got himself a shatter as well. Really need to see this EMP from TYG. Yeah, that would be the game changer if they can get it out. But the Earth Shatter is already there on Persia and a week, and they're both already dead. Even though the minefield did kill Shailin, now that EMP that TYG has finally banked up, it's too late to be impactful. He knows better than to commit it. But Talon do lose another fight. What you're seeing out of the minefield consistently from Wrecking Ball players is. You get maybe one kill at best, and I know you're not just meant to get kills, you're meant to be able to lock off areas as well, but it just seems like a lot of teams are undeterred, they don't care about that, they can walk through it, they're not losing members. Reinhardt with the shields up just cleans it all up, and for Talon Esports, no mileage really out of this wrecking ball in my opinion. And that's the thing, the fact that they can't change onto something else is really hurting them. The moment the Reinhardt is able to react to the wrecking ball, you can't just change off it, they're kind of stuck in the situation, EMP's good. but there's the EMP, it is good, and the sound barrier is better laid on top of it but Bazzi's not got anything only just now getting something with the Dragon Blade is Mui holding on to this Graviton Surge Shailen had popped the rally they start to fight back now Talon once again they're not getting the quick conversion of these really high impact ultimates and that's to say nothing of the ones that aren't being high impact the thing is they're losing a lot of members Villain Yo on the Rick and Balls trying his best to lock out the supports he's doing that but the other half of Hong Kong Attitude are still winning the fight you can't tell me out of one EMP and a Dragon Blade combo two ultimates, you only got one kill, and then Bazzi, the, Dra the Genji player, dies anyway to a Ting. Mui doesn't even have to use his Dragon, well, rather his Graviton Surge, gets to save it for the next defense, and Hong Kong to continue walking away with these ults. This has got to be a real saver, though. A week, finally, on this Junkrat. Has got himself eh, tired, but he can't really get through all that health. That's so unfortunate. Gets Mui, though. That is pretty big, but immediately Bazzi is traded back. No grab. So again, no advantage. It takes the grab off the table, but it doesn't give Talon win conditions. It just delays Hong Kong Attitude's win conditions. And they've still got others, like that Earth Shatter that's just popped Villain Yo out of the picture. Now, again, Talon, they just kind of have to remove themselves from this fight. They've only got a minute. They can't afford a drawn-out process here. And they didn't have to, you know, they didn't get these ultimates out of Hong Kong Attitude. And once again, there's no punish for this. Mui going down with Graviton Surge available. In a lot of cases, you think, well, that's a pretty big loss. But in this case, you didn't even feel the difference. Mui still gets to come back, still gets to use the Graviton Surge next time. And you're just waiting for this EMP once again to make value, but we've said that many times now, and so many times, the EMP has not been good in terms of actually collecting kills. This does seem like a fight that could change the tune ultimately, because Talon just have that many more ultimates coming up with TYG. Barely detected, they know he's there, but he kills CQB and immediately EMP goes down, got. EMP off the table. And they're gonna have to commit, they're caught in the grab, the self-destruct is right in the middle of them, gets three, Less than 15 seconds to go. Talon not even going to get a chance to have that final fight. All those ultimates count for nothing. Bazzi is going to stall this out, but this is this is a last gasp. This is desperation if I ever saw it. Well, we do have now that overtime in effect, but what's he going to do by himself? He has to blade. It's a solo blade. He gets booped up by the sound barrier, boosted up rather, and a week gets one with the rip tire. They've got a little bit of headway in here, but that's the last of their ultimates, and now they start to get picked off unless they can get kills quick smart and without losing any more members, they will eventually get beaten back, and that is what happens oh. now as the Earth Shatter onto two of the few members still in this fight. Given that a week was already dead, Talon not going to get any progress, not even so much as a third on point B here on Temple of Anubis. Once again, it does feel that Hong Kong Attitude have set themselves up for a victory. Well, that was a commanding defense on that B as well. But we, again, you get the flashbacks to King's Row. This is where you look back and you kind of get traumatized a little bit because 
you've been in scenarios, Hong Kong Attitude have been in scenarios where they're expected to win. I think we're back there exactly as you said. They can exactly, you know, get some progress onto B and L, cap it out, they win this map, they're back in the series, at least for now. But the reason you want to believe in them was because of how commanding, of how convincing that defensive hold was. The fact that Talon Esports just seemed to be completely out of ideas, nothing was really working. EMP played, doing nothing. Wrecking Ball Minefield, doing nothing. Even then, you have 1010 coming out with the self-destruct. What Minefield? One self-destruct clears everything. And I hate to sound so absolutist, but it really does just seem that this is a lineup, roster-wise, Talon wants to field when they want to play this specific team comp. And honestly, Hong Kong attitude, it feels like without even trying, have worked out how to counter it. Talon don't have any other options right now. They're just having to throw the same thing at the wall, hoping it sticks. Well, the other thing that kind of limits them here is because of the way their substitutions have worked, their flex tank play, Gagora, is currently on the bench Jack. while they brought in three DPS plays. Bazzi, TYG, in a week, they usually only have two DPS players at a time. The first time we've seen them run tri triple DPS was last week, and they lost that matchup against Monster Shield. That wasn't necessarily the reason, but right now, this reason could cost them the map. It sounds a bit weird though, but technically it is a map they can afford to lose. Look, you'd like to close it out right here, right now. And if you end up losing because you end up in this uh, sort of impossible situation with your roster, you know, you just don't have the right players fielded for the situation. It sucks. It's a bit sour, but it's not the end of the world. Talon can still come back after this, and that's only if Hong Kong Attitude actually win it here. This isn't the first time we've said they've set themselves up for victory, only to have them fall short of the mark. Well, see how well this defense works. Well, TYG is already super low, so it's going to make dangerous. engaging very difficult for the defenders. Yeah, TYG still has to wait for another round of health packs to get the health topped off. Does get it, but by that point, Hong Kong Attitude have already got into the position they were after. They just kind of need to last out through all this damage. 10-10. Who's going to be able to join the team? Valingo got down to half there, so super scary position oh. to be in. That's, that's dangerous now for Hong Kong Attitude. They're in a very suboptimal position. Just lost a big chunk of what is shielding them and keeping them alive. Talon have just kind of bottled Hong Kong Attitude up in this really tight, awkward, narrow space that Mui's probably not going to be able to rejoin in. You can see what Hong Kong Attitude are trying to do. They want to flank around the high ground to get access to the point. There might actually be a bit of a spawn camp here if they're not too careful. Mui is just stuck. He doesn't have the mobility the to really get there. But the rest of the team, you're right, they're on the point. Talon made the mistake of looking to kill Mui, going for that spawn camp to keep the 6v5. But the 5 were happy to take a third of the point for free. And now they've evened up the score. Bazzi does get one. They do get another now. But it's still, like I said, even. Hong Kong Attitude also have that closer respawn. Talon are going to have to commit ultimates here. They have the ultimates to play with at least, so they bought themselves that advantage. Heroic. One tickery went through, and I want to note that Hong Kong Attitude are not quite off the point just yet. Earth Shatter only onto Villain Yo, but it does clean him up. Again, he's close to Denies the ultimate. Spawns. Yeah, exactly. And a weak gets nothing with the Pulse Bomb. Now Haru commits his Sound Barrier onto a bit of a lacking number of members. They do get a few back, but I I'm going to be honest, Talon are kind of botching this fight a little bit. They're giving Hong Kong Attitude space they should not be getting, and they're not ever in a good position to commit all their ultimates. They've had every advantage, but Hong Kong Attitude has been turning it into a disadvantage, and now it's Hong Kong Attitude coming into their own. Talon have used everything at this stage. They're about to get another EMP, but they're unlikely to want to commit this. They have pretty much lost his camp right now. Villanyo going to try and just stall for as long as he can, buy the rest of the defenders some time to set up on B, and they're going to need that time to set up because the EMP is ready to go, but they need to convert. We haven't seen a ton of kills come out of Talon's EMP so far. They have to change that now. Hong Kong Attitude quick to get into position. They don't quite have the ultimates up just yet for a big snowball. And that gives Talon a little bit of breathing room. But remember, Hong Kong Attitude, five and a half minutes, need only get a third here. Yep, gotta see a little bit of a nap being taken by Snow Shylin there. There's the EMP finally. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, that's putting the whole computer to sleep. And with that, Talon are gonna have no trouble picking up that fight. And like I said, that is the breathing space that Talon sorely needed on this defense. And they finally get the kills on the EMP as well. So important. Look at the rest of the ultimates they get to charge off that. And some of them were freshly changed members as well. Bazzi now going to get himself a Dragon Blade. On Attitude, lose the momentum. They do come up into a few more ultimates, but Talon, it's not just the Dragon Blade, it's also the rally that is imminent. It's the minefield when you're on the defender's position. That minefield is a lot more impactful. On Attitude do have a more uphill battle this time. 
Well, you see where this Graviton Surge comes down as well. If Talon Esports can force a fight in an inopportune space for Hong Kong Attitude, you may see some desperation ults come from Hong Kong that are not ideal. They're just taking their time. Here we go. For the flank, and here's the commit from Bazzy. Pin down a Ting. Excellent catch. Now it's a week's turn to try with this rip tire. Absolutely hits the mark. That is a big blow dealt to Hong Kong Attitude, who are still going for this fight, but they're just lacking now in members. That's probably going to be it here. You don't even see your team just retreat. suicides himself into the mines here. Doesn't feed additional alt charge back to Villanio. Very important to note that. But Talon Esports, they pulled it off. They managed to dive in despite botching the Dragon Blade. The rest of the members say that. And that was just an excellent catch from a team. But one excellent catch a successful fight does not make. And there was just a lot of very powerful tools that Hong Kong Attitude would have to fight through. If it wasn't the Dragon Blade, it was likely to be the Riptire. And it was, in fact, the Riptire. Now we see the rotation coming through from Talon Esports as well in terms of the alt economy. We saw the EMP come out that charged up other ultimates. Those other ultimates win a fight, allows TYG to get another EMP, and the cycle will continue as long as Talon Esports can continue winning. But they have to get good value out of this EMP once again. I mean, this was always the strength of Sombra, especially on those defenses. It's that ultimate seesaw. You use the EMP to rotate into everything else, use everything else to rotate into the EMP, and there's the EMP out now, which means all those ultimates for Hong Kong added shoot just can't be used they can't click the Q button and then you already see those other ultimates coming up on rotation for Talon yep now they got that tire again they've won with all these ultimates when it's been the EMP it's been a victory when it's been the tire it's been a victory now we're back to that tire now we're in a situation where Hong Kong attitude from attackers perspective have tried time and time again to go through that left side they've been botched they've been completely shut shut down every single time and a tire is going to do some huge damage in that position again we're also just under three minutes in, in that position now where Hong Kong Attitude might never make it through at all if Talon keep rotating through these ultimates in this way. They need to have some more success. It's a Nano Blade that's going to do it this time. Oh, diving oh what? And again, a Ting, you legend! Doesn't quite kill Bazzy immediately, thanks to the Nano Boost, but 7 HP, he's not in a happy spot. He gets out, though, with his life, and there's the Rip Tire. Once again, it's not the Blade. The Rip Tire will do it, and this time, even worse, Hong Kong Attitude committed ultimates. Feels almost scripted at this rate. And I gotta say for Bazzy, that time it was 100% his own fault. He actually dashed into a Ting who was charging away. He dashed so far that he dashed directly into the path of the charge itself, going through a Ting's body. And then, I mean, the pin just comes on through. He's just very lucky to not die in that scenario. But again, you need a week to come through with a huge tire. He does so. Man. Need I remind the viewers at this point, if it's a draw, we do just move on through. The draw gets ignored altogether because we're approaching that situation. Oh, that's a but shatter. But this, maybe not, yeah. There's already the one pick that came through. The shatter connected down, and now Haru is dead. This is the opening Hong Kong attitude I've been looking for and lacking thus far. And it's because TYG didn't have the EMP, only just able to commit it out now. Maybe able to turn it around, but not if a week goes down. They needed that rip tire. Now it's going to have to be the Dragon Blade, and it'll be the first time Bazzy's low. got anything with it. Not going to get anything with it. Weeks down. They're all just getting picked off a week, just respawning now with this rip tire. It's got to pay dividends. Only one third required. Nothing. Luckily, nothing again. No, gets 10-10's mech. And now they finish off 10 10 himself, but another Earth Shatter plus the Fire Strike. And Talon, every single time they've respawned, they've just been killed again. They've stopped any progress from happening so far, but that time is fast coming to an end. Yep, and they're gonna probably lose one member. Don't even lose one member to the charge over there. Grab right on the, the side. edge of the point as well. Talon, they can't get members on Nothing here. Nothing from my field. Do just. Not staying alive for long enough. Villanue again down. It's just Talon hemorrhaging members. Everything here feels like delaying the inevitable. But the Reaper, he comes a knocking, and Hong Kong Attitude are going to keep their semi final hopes alive. It took some time to get there. You almost got scared for them. You almost thought that they were not going to do this once again. A full hold on to B. Did not get any, did not allow any progress rather than coming out from the other side from Talon Esports, but. They did it. They only needed to get one tick. It took them a long time to get said one tick, but they just needed some momentum. They needed some really bad ultimates to become to come through from the Talon side. And I do actually want to commend Talon all things through. That was a very difficult game for them. They struggled insanely hard on that attack and on the defense. They nearly made it happen. They nearly forced that draw.
I mean, there's two things I really want to note there. First of all, in that last fight, did feel like, you know, Hong Kong Attitude won it quite early. It was just completing that that took quite a while. It did feel a little bit like it was inevitable. The other side of that, though, I want to really commend Talon for that defense when you compare it to the attack. The attack where they weren't able to make any headway. Well, it was that exact same team composition that was stopping Hong Kong Attitude from making any headway on their own attack. I think on the whole, this is just a situation of lesson learned for Talon. Don't put yourself in a situation where that's your only option on attack. But definitely pull it out on defense. It works. I think we're telling as well, and, and I gotta say, in hindsight, it definitely did work. There is also a world where Hong Kong Attitude just completely barrel through, and we say it didn't work. But at the same time, you look at Telling Esports and you say they made it work. It was a sort of making the best of a bad situation almost. They kind of discovered partway through the map, oh dear, maybe we shouldn't have subbed out a Flick Stank. Maybe we shouldn't have three DPS players in this lineup right now. And on that defense, it nearly paid off for them. They, again, it just does still feel like somewhat of a band-aid solution. Like, okay, we just got to make the best of it. The best of it was nearly a full hold. The best of it nearly cost uh, Hong Kong Attitude this victory. But Hong Kong Attitude do pick up the victory. And now Talon can maybe just amend that situation roster-wise as we move on forward to our fourth map of the series. Because that is where we're going. It's not just going to be another 3-0. And uh, I have to say, I'm quite pleased at that. We expected this to be quite a good series. We expected it to be quite a long series. So far, it's been one of those and was nearly not the other, but now heading one back, Hong Kong Attitude. One against two, still at match point, but very crucially, alive. I think for Hong Kong Attitude to be considerate of right now is, that was probably, you know, we've been in a scenario right now, Kings Row was winnable, should have probably won that. Uh, Temple of Anubis again, very winnable, and they did win that. So we are seeing Hong Kong Attitude be in a position where when they're expected to win, when they have a huge lead, they set up a clear win condition, they actually can capitalize. This issue still is, the last part that's concerning is, the part that took them a very long time to realize that, and on yeah. King's Row, when they didn't even realize that. So it, there's just, just kind of lingering doubt when you go to map four, can they continue the streak? Can Hong Kong Attitude bring us to a map five by winning when they're meant to be winning? And I would like to think they can, because it was the payload part of King's Row that went the best for them on the attack. Unfortunately, though, it's the part that went the worst for them on the defense. It's going to be on Rialto, though, which is a bit of a different kettle of fish. This is where we see some of our hardest defenses, but also some of our most steamrolling attacks. So which of these is it going to be for each of these teams? I'm going to say, in general, Rialto has been one of the few maps where it's quite difficult to finish. We don't see that many map completions and contenders Pacific for Rialto specifically. Most teams will get kind of partway through B and then maybe get onto C and then run out of time. And it's that A defense, that A point attack as well, that's very defining. A lot of teams lose a lot of time there, do see a lot of first point holds. And because you lose a lot of time on A, you just simply do not have enough to finish the rest of the map. So we've seen some pretty insane time banks in terms of looking at King's Row. Didn't quite see a time bank on Temple of Anubis, but again, maybe going to Rialto, not expecting a time bank. There's just so many opportunities for a team to create a whole situation on Rialto. And in the spaces between those, it's really easy to skirmish and slow down the payload. That's just one part of why it's quite hard to finish this off. But like I said, on the other side of that, we see some of our most extreme games in terms of the momentum for the attackers. I'm interested to see right now if teams want to continue playing Wrecking Ball. We're going to see some more Sombra being played here. So we still haven't seen a single new Symmetra. Could be changing if Haru actually does want to play this. I think the likely position you'll see Symmetra if it does get played is actually in a DPS position. So this is probably not going to be the one. TYG in a week playing. Bazzy going to be on the bench and Gagora back in play as well. And that's really... I have to say, reassuring to see that we've got Gogora back in. He may even pull out this wrecking ball. I don't. He's been think teasing it the whole time. Yeah, I don't think it's out of the picture at all. And uh, they've shown a willingness to play it, just maybe not with this exact lineup. At least not yet. Wow. 
Provider 2 playing the 3-3. Goat's composition, triple tank, triple support. No Widowmaker though, no snipers at all, so that may be interesting because it's going to allow a weak to get a decent flank if he can make it through that corridor section, that narrow, narrow sort of area yeah. of point A. Yeah, they have to put a lot more active pressure onto a weak to stop him from uh, having his uh, having his day, as it were. You can't just kind of leave your Widow there to go, all right, counter sniper, make it happen. But the other option you have is just go for a fight right down the middle. They drop Villain Yo, and it just slows down Talon that extra little bit. I'll say a team's been finding some really fantastic charges across the last two maps, but at the same time, yeah. this, is where, this is where that Widowmaker conversation does have to be brought back into play. How are you meant to challenge him? Because he's getting picks. And now, because they can't be healed, the tanks start to get pressured out. I mean, CQB alone can't really top these members off, unfortunately. And Mango Jai was really close to a Coalescence as well when he got headshot. I mean, that's the swing factor of the Widowmaker at its most extreme, I would say. CQB doing his best to hide behind a lamppost or something at this rate. Again, a weak's in a sort of like position a where... Character. Yeah, almost kind of, right? A sort of position now where the card is nearly at the finish line for A. Here comes that Coalescence. Finally, they are able to commit it, and that means they're able to push forward. But Talon actually had the space to pull backwards. That's the crucial thing. They now have to push back onto the cart itself, but they haven't lost any members. They haven't lost too much positioning either. They're able to push back in now. That's the ultimates coming through from Hong Kong Attitude. Coalescence has long been gone now. Oh, that's such a big Earth Shatter. Does get rescued out by the Transcendence. Excellent read by Persia. And now they have got Gagora back up with a grab, an absolute massive one at that. And they clean out Hong Kong Attitude. Nearly saved that one with the Earth Shatter. Nearly preempted all those key cooldowns, but just not quite. I want to remind everyone of Week 5 for Talent Esports as well. This is TYG on the Tracer, connecting Pulse Bombs with Gagora's Graviton Surge. This is their strategy for getting through Rialto. This is why TYG is here, and this is why in the pregame we talked about his Tracer being a pretty clutch factor for this team. Now Talon moving a little bit further forward, just trying to create the space for themselves. Trying to harass Hong Kong Attitude as they look to set up some kind of defense. Now Hong Kong Attitude themselves. Maybe they're going to move forward, start a bit of a brawl on the payload. Really need to find the Scraviton Surge. They're definitely Ooh. looking for positioning right now. They got one. the grab out. Yeah, 1010 actually killed a weak out of the mech, I believe that was, and preserves it with the self-destruct. So, with that Hong Kong attitude, they haven't got many kills, but they've at least got the fight on the payload. Now they've stopped its progress for the time being. The Coalescence, oh, and it's done on TYG, means he gets finished off. Grab out from Gagora, can't get followed up on. They didn't have the Pulse Bomb part of that Wombo combo. And now it's actually Talon in recovery mode. Here comes the Earth Shadow, though. You've got to say that's better recovered. <laughs> yeah, that's a hell of a recovery. Uh, every dog has its day, as it were. And Talon, again, I mean, when they're winning these fights, they're just absolutely washing out Hong Kong Attitude, who themselves are only really stalling Talon. And part of this is Villanyo got that Earth Shadow, it was alive because he got caught in the Graviton Surge but didn't quite die. Hong Kong Attitude put so much in to trying to get him down. He was the only member caught in the Graviton Surge, and yet he still survives, gets to play the Shatter. That gives Talon a win. And that's the thing, when they don't have one combo, they're finding other ways in. Speaking of combos, they're coming up on that grab pulse bomb again. The Hong Kong Attitude need to preempt it. Ready. King stuck in the middle here. It is ready. It doesn't come out. TYG died, and the pulse bomb went wide. Talon are again just getting beaten back. They've actually yet to really pull off this combo, unfortunately. And this time, for the first time, it does really feel like Hong Kong Attitude won the fight consistently. And they won against the big combo from Talon Esports as well. That's their one big weapon. And now that Hanzo doesn't get the damage boost from the Mercy, I mean, you're less likely to want to run that Dragon Strike in. It probably still is a little bit more consistent than running the Pulse Bomb, but they're just deciding oh not to do it. And there's the power of TYG. They're just able to wrap around a Ting. He can't point that shield in all directions at all times. So he's stunned the show. No one going down in the Earth Shatter. And they are able to throw out a self-destruct from 10-10. It's going to get blocked. And he won't get back in the mech, but Villanueva's down. It does seem that they've just got a few too many kills here, Talon, for Hong Kong Attitude to keep the defense alive. A Graviton Surge locked up the attacking members just long enough for Villanueva, or rather a team to break in. Boom. But it's TYG. Look, it's TYG who's making a lot of these plays happen. Doesn't even need the grab combo this time around. Just finds uh -huh. the picks. 
the catch on Tenten as he pops out of the mech as well is just so nasty. Again, I've got to go back to this notion of, like, even in that one that felt like a more convincing fight win for Hong Kong Attitude, it inevitably feels like they're only ever delaying talent. Delaying long enough, though, at least for the time being. Under three minutes now available for Talent Esports. Seen a lot of teams fail with this remaining amount of time. You do have to win a decent number of fights in a row if you are telling to actually finish the map. So we're seeing that same scenario where it is very difficult for a team to actually make the full distance. This last point especially is uh, where it gets a little bit tricky. This is where just stalling can actually really pay off for a team. And even then, they're doing a little bit better than just stalling this time around. Hong Kong Attitude slowly getting better and better in each of these fights. Now beating Talon back, Villain Yo does trade one back. Hong Kong Attitude haven't got the quick conversion of kills that they needed, but again, this Pulse Graviton nothing. Pulse Bomb combo just doesn't get anything. It's the rest of the team that has to just frag Hong Kong Attitude out. And this time around, the Sound Barrier coming through at the right time as well to block all the damage, which has mostly kept the Hong Kong Attitude members alive, but they are still forced backwards. Changing a weak on the fire is very effective now, but CYG is still the one picking up kills. It, it just feels really bizarre. Like, we're in this upside-down world, right? The combos aren't actually getting the kills for Talon, but then Hong Kong Attitude aren't getting kills in their own right, are ending up overextended, and then Talon are pushing them back, and doubly so. Now you have a week here just kind of hiding in the high ground, or rather the sort of ceiling section. Doesn't have much further distance to go, but the barrage is ready. 10-10 spotted it out, though, and that means the week has to be careful how he does this. Doesn't really get much at all. The Earth Shattered, though, does get a heck of a lot. Talon getting kills. Hong Kong Attitude trying to keep it alive. The cart's still moving forward. Hong Kong Attitude have a closer respawn, but if all your members are dead, it doesn't count for much, and they've got no ultimates. They don't really have a win condition here for this last defense. They have a Graviton Surge coming up soon, but they have to use it ASAP. Mui has to charge it so quickly. Shannon's already dead as well, as is a Ting, so now Mui's solo. Oh, it's done. Thank God! Couldn't get there in time. And there's the grab after the cart's already capped out. Look, it's not the end of the world. They slow down Talon a lot. It's not a lot of time, 101. And Hong Kong Attitude certainly can get a better time in their own right. Again, you got to revisit King's Row. That was a better defense from Hong Kong Attitude than what they did on King's Row. Now, if they could just replicate their attack on King's Row, they should get a larger time bank. Hong Kong Attitude as well. Unable to find the right sort of resources right in the final section. You note that as soon as Talon Esports broke through the double doors, that last choke point, that's when that last point really opened up. A week, again, managing to, uh, to go quite deep into that defensive section, find an angle for the barrage. Did kind of get caught by Tintin, but just evaded him and still landed that barrage. That was a huge play coming up from Talon Esports that really pushed them further. And for Hong Kong Attitude, because they got reset so hard, a lot of teams on the defense, they may lose the defense, but they have enough members to still contest the choke. That's why you don't see the cart make the progression. It's the progression of the, that actual objective that made the distance for Talon Esports that really kept them that way. Think something that could really just make all the difference here, though, is if at any one point Talon holds Hong Kong Attitude for basically a full fight, like a full reset, Hong Kong Attitude shouldn't be able to get a comparable time. Unless in every other part of the map, they basically don't lose a fight and don't lose any progress at all. Because uh, Talon, they were stalled up, but they were never forced to reset. They never lost like 30 whole seconds yep. at a time. Well, that's the momentum, right? That's why I gotta say, because they put, put pressure on the actual mo objective, kept momentum going and kept that card moving, that's what counts at the end of the day, and that's why they got that, that full cap. A lot of teams, like you mentioned, if they lose 30 seconds, they get fully reset, lose control of the card, that's when they don't get to finish this map for Hong Kong Attitude. That risk is still definitely there, so you're right. You gotta get a pretty good time here, and A is where they gotta get the best time. Moving forward, but TYG is already setting up around this backside flank. As the team's just kind of brawling out this early stage, as you do. Card's not actually moving right now. Finally back on it. Still need to find a way to deal with the weak here. Talon Esports aren't really changing up anything. They're just running the exact same composition. This time on defense, and this time it's going to be even more difficult to deal with the weak. Talon are already banking up some big ultimates. No kills just yet either way, but Hong Kong Attitude kind of broke this initial hold. That was a good sleep on Villain Yo. They couldn't quite get the kill, but they do get the cut into the courtyard. That's the first defensive position from Talon already gone. There's an Earthshatter as well with the Nano Boost coming out. 
Yeah, it gets just reacted to too easily. 10-10 does lose the mech, but I mean, that's not a lot for all the ultimates talent committed there, and TYG goes down. Now it's got to be the grab, and they are coming up on the defensive tools, but they're not getting the kills aside from just now a pick on Shylin. Mui, if they can get him, that's big. There we go, no grab available now, and finally Talon are going to dig in their heels, push Hong Kong Attitude back. Yeah, but this reset for Hong Kong Attitude is actually pretty decent. They're going to come back in with good numbers for Talon Esports. Their respawn distance is just that much further. Oh. This kill into Mango Jai, though, with pushing him off the edge, or rather he's been forced off the edge, that will slow Hong Kong Attitude down, and now this reset does kind of hurt. And this is exactly what okay. we were talking oh. about. Oh, and another one. This is exactly what I was saying oh. earlier. If they can really get a big reset out of Hong Kong Attitude, then it can just make all the difference in terms of the time. Even with these decent ultimates that Hong Kong Attitude come back in with, keep in mind, there's a transcendence that can just neuter half of these ultimates from HKA. It's also a really big problem if a week continues finding picks. There's no mercy on the side of Hong Kong Attitude. They don't get to get that resurrection. They just have to play 5v6 if that does actually happen. Louis looking for a chance to grab. Gonna run it forward, try and get in the middle of the team. It does connect, but there's an Earth Shatter on half of the members of Hong Kong Attitude, which means they can't follow up. The Transcendence was there anyway, and this is, once again, Hong Kong Attitude just not getting what they need out of these tools. They're getting counted out, they're getting red. This fight's still going, brawling out now, but it's just tipping the weight of Talon with these few extra tools, Hong Kong Attitude, because they couldn't get a lot out of the grab, couldn't get a lot out of the fight. Do you see a weak sniping down Mango Jaisal when he was playing the Ana? Changes onto the Moira now, maybe a little bit more agile, maybe he can just escape the sights of a weak just a little bit better. But for Talon Esports, every single kill they get just is so good because they have the Mercy on their side, they get to use a Resurrection, Hong Kong Attitude don't have that buffer. They don't really have any buffer, they've already lost a whole chunk of time anyway. If they do get it to the end, it's going to be pretty lean as far as the clock is concerned. It's going to be the final couple of fights here. If they do win this, they do get the cap, I believe. They're close enough with the card, but easier said than done. There's a grab ready for Gagora. They have put the sound barrier out, and there is that grab from Gagora plus the pulse bomb in. They only get Shylin with it, but a team's low. They finally start making some headway, though, with kills of their own. Haru down. A weak as well gets headshotted out by 1010. Who has to commit the self destruct here to preserve the mech, but they've pushed back these tanks. Villain Yo. Doesn't want to go for an Earth Shatter here. Charges in, knocked on his back, and goes down. I can respect him wanting to stall, giving it a go, but ultimately Hong Kong Attitude finally cap out A. And Villanjo there, not wanting to use the Earth Shatter, he actually had the opportunity to do earlier. A team charges straight past him. You know there's no shield. He can slam the hammer down for free, chooses not to, then doesn't find another situation to use his Earth Shatter. Town Esports don't get that opportunity to fully hold A, but they do bleed off a lot of time that is still very important because Hong Kong Attitude had to finish the map. And now you see 1010 10 getting up in the face of a week. Also draws a couple of members of Talon back. There's the Earth Shatter from Villain Yo, but it didn't get anything done. Charged back as he is. Can't get saved by the Transcendence. Neither can Haru or a week. TYG, the only one to get a kill. This is the momentum that Hong Kong Attitude have been really needing. And this is dangerous for Talon Esports right now because they're losing a lot of members staggered just one Still. by one. Everyone they have to wait for in terms of respawners. All this means is free can't push for Hong Kong Attitude who are still charging more and more ultimates and Talon Esports still looking for ultimates. They've been bled dry. Even as CQB gets chunked out, he's going to be fine. They get it back off. There is enough time for Talon to set up for a defense here. The fourth thing nearly dying there. They've got a couple of ultimates still at their disposal, Hong Kong Attitude. See how quickly this barrage gets charged up as well, but the time is starting to run out. Does get pushed out by 1010, taken out by 1010 even. Yeah, 1010's really starting to come alive here at long That's last. The cat comes through in the middle of the fight as well. It's a bit of a blunder by Talon to not keep boots on the payload, but I have to say, Hong Kong Attitude doing a great job of keeping Talon separated and stopping them from executing the fight they want. And Hong Kong Attitude right now making up for the lost time on A. They got a really quick cap onto B. They have to now translate that into a full camp on to see with just under three minutes. It's certainly doable, but we've been in a number of situations where we talk about Hong Kong Attitude just being able, well, they should be able to do it. I mean, you consider, right, they, they lost about two minutes on point A. They get to point B capped out just 10 seconds less than what Talon had. That's a bit of a boo-boo of a grab way up high. Not going to catch anyone up there. Meanwhile, Gagora's one on the ground. Going to catch all of Hong Kong Attitude safe. 
for now with the sound barrier out. And now just all ultimates kind of off the table, save for Villanueva's Earth Shatter. Comes down, pops a few on their bags. Where's the kills? Oh, struggling to get the follow up. They get Shaolin, but Hong Kong Attitude have now largely recovered, especially with this coalescence. That a week is going to go down trying to get an. A rocket barrage rather on top of Hong Kong attitude. There's still momentum coming through from that camp onto B. There hasn't been a reach so far. This is a big shatter, but nothing happens. Yeah, that's the full alley oop, but no connection. TYG bumping a ting up in the air. Rez coming in onto Villain Yo. This is where Talon really are up against a wall, but they do have the closer respawns and they are beating back Hong Kong attitude, who themselves now are very lean on ultimates and I think are going to have a hard time getting those last few meters done. Talon Esports kind of went into desperation there, a week coming through as the May. Will likely actually stay on the May right now as long as Hong Kong Attitude want to play GOATS, as long as they want to play triple tank, triple support. The May here with the wall would do a great job of blocking up this line of sight, great job of splitting up that offense. With 1 minute 11 remaining for Hong Kong Attitude, there is still risk that they don't finish, especially because Tyre is about to be online. There's a grab coming out onto all the talent though. Wall does and nothing. The response, yeah, they just fly and dive and dash right around it. No problems at all. Hong Kong attitude low as they are. It's only CQB who goes down. And the coalescence can rescue the rest. Decent stun. Tire now. Still stunned to beat back the members. Villano down. TYG with this tire. Hasn't been spotted. Only gets a ting though. 10 10 will not get back in the mech though. Dies to the pile driver. That is key. And now Hong Kong attitude lacking in the tanks. Probably can't do it on this push. We need to see CQB here with the sound barrier. That might be enough for Hong Kong Attitude. It's four members. Yeah. Talon Esports are losing members. It keeps these few squishy members alive for long enough for the tanks to come back in. Amazingly, Mui solo tanking held down the fort and a big earth shatter right at the end just to help clean up these last few members. The charge does get blocked out by a cheeky wall from a week, but he will go down. And now it's Talon in full desperation mode. They may force Hong Kong Attitude That's into overtime here but it is indeed a cap there it is Hong Kong attitude they do it they do it right in the final second as well they have such good momentum you didn't even expect them to maybe complete that because they had a scenario onto a where again spent so much time nearly the full four minutes onto a that they didn't even cap on through the captain the eventually with about 30 something seconds remaining just under maybe even but that B point capture that B point push, the snowball through, was so effective for Hong Kong Attitude. They made up for so much lost time that they made that final push effective, that they, that they made the possibility of finishing the map available. And you're reminded once again of King's Row. Even the times are comparable here. Only a couple of seconds difference in total. It was 102 for Hong Kong Attitude and 153 for Talon Esports. This is almost exactly the same. It's kind of uncanny. The one thing though, Hong Kong Attitude can't afford this time around is that extra two minutes they lost on attacking point A. They had to get through the courtyard quick and then get that same momentum underway. They should be able to steer themselves through the defense and win. That's one minute versus 155 as well. So for Hong Kong Attitude, they just have to get sort of on their own defense later on. I should be saying that right now Hong Kong Attitude attack, but when Hong Kong Attitude are going to be defending, they just got to get past that first 55 seconds and then they're into the business. But for Hong Kong Attitude right now, and bringing up King's Roar is very important. If they can get any good progress, it's going to count for something. If they can cap A, that's already good enough. Interesting here, a week is actually going out onto a Hanzo here. TYG as well off the tracer onto a Junkrat. Looking to kind of grab spam dragon. out. Yeah, grab Dragon for one thing and spam out this early point as well. It's going to be quite important, Hong Kong Attitude. Not going to change too much here, just still sticking up to the GOATS. 3-3 three, three comp. Any progress is good progress right now, so they are mostly sticking onto the cut. They are losing members too. It's an unfortunate early casualty, and they haven't exactly got a counter trade in. This is time that they can scarce afford to lose, especially if they get staggered out here. If they're going to lose, they need to lose fast. This is the only fight that they can afford to lose as well. The next one is going to end their entire attack. The next one is going to give ultimates for Talon Esports, and it's going to happen in the middle of that fight. Look for the Graviton Surge. Look for the Rip Tire. Those are going to be the game enders. It's not looking hot for Hong Kong Attitude. They just got at the barrel onto the point. Dive up high from 10-10. Already chunked out CQB low. But they get TYG. One that off. is very crucial. Rez does come in. But in that window, they can maybe get something done. A week's got a Dragon Strike though. Shylan's already dead again. Here come the ultimates. There's the grab. There goes the Dragon through. I think, yeah, no, the Dragon just raking across the team. Gets the work done. And a rip tire just for good measure. Even gets the last two there. 10-10 goes down. No one here to stall it. Not Shylan who died so early in that. 
that last fight. And unfortunately falling prey to the same thing that they struggled with on their initial attack base. Breaking that first hold in the courtyard. And now Hong Kong Attitude really have their work cut out for them if they want to keep their semi-final hopes alive. And that's because this is their final opportunity. If they do not defend this point, if they allow Talon Esports to be able to capture, they will lose. Talon Esports clean the series up 3-1. to one. So Hong Kong Attitude absolutely on their last legs right now. You can see the finish line for that push as well. Not quite good enough, I'm afraid I have to say. It needed to be a little bit further up, maybe around the next corner, maybe close to the full cap of A. That's a very pushable place for Talon Esports on this offense. That means Hong Kong Attitude, if they lose one defense, it's all over. You consider they've got to win roughly four, maybe even five if Talon are quick on the reset. And I like what Talon are running here as well. I'm assuming that they will stick a week on this Widowmaker. One pick, one headshot could just end it all for Hong Kong Attitude. Yeah, Hong Kong Attitude are just banking on this opening gambit here. This is something that Talon Esports actually do quite a decent amount, which is to basically hide into the side room, don't reveal yourself early, and then initially just rush directly onto Talon Esports, get that early advantage, which is important, because you don't want a weak to take the high ground, because as soon as he does that, Hong Kong Attitude are in trouble. Exactly, they need the early fight win to get the momentum. Should be some, you should be kind of concerned right now if you're telling esports, you're wondering where they are. They've already been spotted out, actually. Now they've got to go. Oh no, there's the headshot. Shailin again, the catch. Oh no. Oh dear. And it's disaster. A week gets two headshots, and I think that's it. Hong Kong attitudes. The spawn is just too far away. And even though it seems like nothing's happening, the payload just lazily drifts towards that cap out. It is going to arrive there with no resistance. Another mainstay of the Pacific region falls in a quarterfinal. It is Talon Esports bettering their season one results. And now the question is, how far will they go? Because they will be making that semi-final where they play Monster Shield Korea. I gotta say, where one team falls, another team rises, and that's Talon Esports. They are a returning team from Contenders season one. That means we could have new veterans of the Pacific region and Talon Esports could be that mainstay now going towards that semi-final. Three to one victory. Hong Kong Attitude made it close. Again, go back to King's Row. If that was a win, we would have been to map five already. But Hong Kong Attitude not quite having enough to be able to pull through a victory. This time, not even getting to the semifinals. And for Talon Esports, their first ever semifinals will be awaiting them soon. And it feels like it should have gone there. It feels like it should have been Hong Kong Attitude getting King's Row. It should have been them at match point coming on to Rialto. We should have been going to that tiebreaker control. But what actually happened? Talon showed up. Talon beat Hong Kong Attitude, good as Hong Kong Attitude looked on King's Row. They also absolutely deserved to win on Lee Jung Tower. And on the whole, you've got to say, this is a team that deserves to have bettered their season one result. Unfortunately for Hong Kong Attitude, this time around they didn't. While their season run may be over, six out of seven members of Hong Kong Attitude will still be in preparation for the 2018 Overwatch World Cup. Half their team will be representing Team Hong Kong, the other half in Chinese Taipei, and both of those squads will be heading over to Korea very, very soon, later on in this month. So the journey isn't quite over for them in terms of their professional year. I mean, there's still another contender season after that yeah. as well. So, I mean, still work to be done here, but uh, Talon Esports, look, I think, to be quite honest with you, Whoever was going to win this, you'd be really championing them through because one team, they're both teams, by the way, are still veterans of the scene in terms of actually coming back from the previous season, telling esports now this is their second season. By the time we get to season three, you'd definitely be calling them veterans of the scene as well. Especially when they make a semi-final. Yeah. At that point, you're looking at this team and going, look, even if they don't make it past that semi-final, they suddenly come in, rather than being you know, a team that technically survived but went out in the quarters they're now a team that would be returning and looking like a potential favorite that does depend on the shape of season three but their road their path their journey for season two has not ended in fact it's still going in their semi-final tomorrow but that is this quarterfinal for now and quarterfinals have not ended yet either for the season there's still two more to be played later on this evening coming up next is cyclops athlete gaming versus exl esports so you definitely want to stay for that one but until then we we'll see you soon